Welcome to another Kev Central Q&A. Had 180 questions this time. I have 24 post-it cards, post-it postcards here with questions that you've asked. So let's get to as many as we can. First one is from Chewy Baca. He asks, uh, the Raleigh mountain bike from Dick's Sporting Goods. I didn't know that Dick's ever carried Raleigh. I know they carried Diamondback, which answers your question. They are affiliated with another brand. Diamondback and Raleigh are sister brands from Excel North America. Okay, question number two comes from Amario, I guess is how you pronounce that. Oh, and also nothing here. Both of you ask about the Pacific Evolution and if I will ever video destroying that. Oh, that's definitely gonna get videoed when I destroy that. Next is Jonathan Diaz. Jonathan asks, will you ever review used a uh, used bike and teach us how to buy from places like Craigslist. I'll probably go over that. And I mean, I buy used bikes all the time, sometimes off of Craigslist, but we don't have a really good Craigslist market here. Things tend to be overpriced, but we'll see what I can do on that. Thanks for asking. All right, next up is a doubler. This is from PC1828 and Skier Family. And you guys wanna know if I've ever considered purchasing an entry-level e-bike or an electric mountain bike. I almost purchased an electric mountain bike last year from Trek, but I ended up not getting it for various reasons. Electric entry-level e-bikes, I'm a little scared of those. Don't think batteries and parts availability on the affordable e-bikes is something that I really want to wade into because the cheap ones are still seven or eight hundred bucks. Peter Warren asks a really good question. When can the cycling industry universally switch to metric measurements? I didn't think about it until Peter asked this question. But we have a mismatch on bikes. Our wheel sizes tend to be in inches, our frame sizes are in inches, but our handlebars are in millimeters. Makes no sense. That's a good question, Peter. I don't know, I wouldn't expect it anytime soon, but it is a good question. The next question is from Luke Fisher, and Luke asks, are you ever going to do budget action cams? You mean like this, this MOS Pro? I bought this and a couple of other action cams. I have a video of Vivitar, I believe it is, that I reviewed. I didn't like that. This one is okay. They are no GoPro and it even overheats. So I'm laying off budget action cams. I'm sticking with GoPro. Our next question comes from Hooper Sappy or Hooper Sappy. I don't know how you're saying that name, but whatever. Thanks for asking your question. And you ask about budget forks under $200. Should you get a Sun Tour or a low end Rock Shocks like the 30TK Silver? Which I believe, isn't that the model that I have on the Hyper Carbon X, the Project X bike that I did? I like Rock Shocks because 170 bucks you can get a really good fork. I'm going to do a video telling exactly why, but there's nothing wrong with Sun Tour. If that's what you need to run, it works. Next up is Carlos Lawrence, and Carlos asks about nutrition. I was wondering on early morning rides, which I do a lot here in the south because it is bakingly hot as soon as it gets past about 9 a.m. You ask, what do I eat to fuel up on early morning rides? I don't eat. I juice before I go and I carry these, which are just little honey snack packs. And then when I get back, then I eat. Otherwise, the heat and eating before I bike, that is, ugh. I learned a long time ago not to do that. BSCU0493 asks about the Raleigh Toku 1 and will 27.5 plus tires fit that bike? I'm glad you asked that because I bought these and I tried them on the Toku 1. They will not fit and these are plus size. They're 3 inch, 27.5 by 3 plus size, but even a 2.8 will not fit. Too tight. Dylan Murphy asks, what is my main bike that I ride on a regular basis? If I have a bike that I ride on a regular basis, and that if is a good question because really it's not fair for me to say anything, but I recently have ridden the Priority 600 more than any of my other bikes. Next question is from Cujo's. Is the Raleigh Kodiak 2 a good full suspension even though it only costs $1,400? Now I know some of my viewers are probably cringing at the only $1,400. If you've ever ridden a mid-range full suspension, how do they compare? I own a bike that is, well, I don't know, you would call it a high-end mid-range or a low-end high-range, whatever you want to call it. And I think that the Kodiak 2 Cujo's stacks up pretty well against them. 
Potassium. I like it when I see names that I've seen before on the Q&A. Do you live in Tennessee? I saw you on the Chickasaw Trace video. No, I live in Alabama. Paul Miller asks, what helmet do you wear? I wear, religiously, see my new one here. This is the Bontrager Solstice helmet. These are MIPS helmets, or well, this is a MIPS version of the helmet. I like these. I think they're good helmets. They're lightweight. They air well. And this was my one that I crashed with the Redline Xander, also a MIPS. Held up, protected my noggin, and that's what they're supposed to do. Jack PZ Faro asks, what are your thoughts on fixed gear riding as a whole? Well, I don't really have thoughts. I have a question. Why? Gears were invented for a reason. I don't understand fixed gear. Just not my thing. Hazard Mountain Bike. I also remember this name from, I believe, the previous Q&A. Will you ever get a higher end mountain bike? I have one. You just haven't seen it yet. Sean's Bikes asks, if you had only one mountain bike, would it be a rigid hardtail or a full suspension? If I could only have one, it would be a hardtail because you can pretty much do it all on a hardtail. Okay, next are some questions that a lot of people gave thumbs up to and a lot asked about. So let me just see if I can go through the list here. Off the road mountain biking, Melanie Timms, legit mountain biker, Novus Hampshire, Amin Shaik, David Ramirez, Ramirez, excuse me, Andre Withers. You guys all asked about the GT Aggressor Pro, which I recently sold to my brother-in-law, so we may see him on some videos in it in the future. He's a Parkinson's patient. They recommended biking to help him with his Parkinson's symptoms, so he's going mountain biking. Hopefully that works out well. He did really well when I dropped it off for them. But you guys all asked about that, so yeah, there'll be some more videos, and I don't know what he'll do. He may even upgrade it. Who knows, but we'll see. Thanks for asking. Three people asked this same question about upgrading big box bikes. I wanted to cover that. Killing Time, Joey Young, and Julian Grimaldi. You guys asked if it was worth it to upgrade a Walmart bike with mid-range parts, or whether it would be best to just now mixing up the three questions or whether it would be best to just get a better quality bike from a local bike shop or if it'd be worth it to upgrade an entry level cross country with better forks you have to be careful with that i know that on this channel i do a lot of upgrades i get a lot of big box bikes there's the newest one coming up in another question here shortly but you know you really gotta watch that because you can sink a lot of money into these bikes and sometimes like in the case of my carbon x I have more money in that bike than, with the exception of it having a carbon frame, than I could get, I could buy an Excalibur 8, an Excal 8 from Trek, for less money than I paid for the Carbon X with all its upgrades, and roughly have about the same bike experience. So you gotta be careful. I don't necessarily recommend doing it. Now, that's not to say that if all you can afford is a big box bike to get you going into cycling, and you wanna slowly upgrade it as you go, that's a whole different thing. Because whatever gets you biking, that's what's important, but make sure you get something useful. But thanks so much to you guys for asking that question. Leolos and Hadi Vlogs ask about the cutback. The Schwinn cutback, my $99 bike that I love, but you can't get anymore apparently. Sold out right as I put the video up. Leolos asked, how is it going? Uh, it's going. You know, I put the original, well you may not know this, but I put the original tires back on and the hub started wearing out. It's got a little bit of wobble in the back now. So I contacted Pacific Cycle and just about a minute worth of phone conversation and they have a new hub on the way for me. And Heidi Vlogs, you asked, how do I find bikes like the Cutback? You asked, uh, let's see, how do you find them before they're sold out, discontinued, and they seem to show up on my channel as soon as they come out sometimes. I do this, I do bike videos so I'm periodically, like every day, looking at Walmart's site, looking at a bunch of sites, going through all the bikes. I look at places like Priority every day, looking to see what kind of sales they have on. So things like that are how I find bikes. But on Walmart specifically, I look a lot at Walmart. I still look at Amazon a lot. I haven't found any bikes recently on Amazon. I feel comfortable buying, but hope that answers your question. Fifth take on this. Having problems with these names. PW, Wiggity White, and Gabriel Mercado. You guys all, I can't believe I got that. You guys all asked about Bikes Direct and bikes like their Gravity Line and what I consider buying them and what do I think about them. 
Well, I've never ridden any of their bikes. I've seen them, I look at them all the time. I would love it if they would send me a bike to review. But yeah, I think they're probably okay. I've seen quite a few Gravities running around town and they seem to be good bikes. As well as their, I forget the name of it, but their other model. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Bikes Direct. Thanks for asking. The XR Pro. Lots and lots of questions about the XR Pro. I mean, lots. Let's see what I've got here. I've got Robert Caldwell, Ik Chingmak, I hope I'm saying that proper, Daniel Ardes, I don't even know, Aredes, Z Dubs, Tony Hayward, Joseph Riviera, Car Dude Person, Crafty Xbox. Did I get Dan David E on there? I don't know, but everybody that asked a question about the XR Pro, I know that that project seems like it's stalled. It has not. I've just been waiting on the proper price for both the drivetrain and the wheel set. I've got the handlebars, put a new, uh, a new stem on it. So it's coming together. I just didn't want to blow unnecessary money because I don't ride that bike. That's not something I feel comfortable on because it kind of sits up. It's just not something that I like. But people that I ride with tend to like it, especially as I've upgraded it. They're really starting to like it. So we'll see what the final form turns out to be. Parts should come available. My drivetrain should be here at the beginning of October. The wheel set, I finally worked that out. That was the biggie. But my local bike shop suggested something that I, I can't believe I didn't think of, but that's worked itself out. So hopefully mid to late October, you guys and everybody else will see the final form of Project XR. Thanks for being patient. Thio Semicarbazide Benzoyl Alcohol, Atomic Garage, Clinton N, Jared Gashne. You guys all asked about the hyper hydroform. The hyper hydroform that I have right here in a box just arrived today. And let me tell you, the Thio, Thio Semicarbazide Benzoyl Alcohol, you are one of the reasons that I started doing a project on Project XR, so I appreciate the suggestions there. And you commented, asked me if I could take the parts off Project XR once I get that completed and put them on this bike and try them out and see what happens and compare the two. That's actually something I was planning on doing anyway, so good thinking. Great minds think alike. Atomic Garage, you also asked about this bike, if I could review it. Clinton N and Jared Gosh, now I apologize if I'm slaughtering that. You asked if I'd ever heard of it. Yes, I had heard of it and just kind of been waiting and it finally went on sale. I bought it for $191. So we'll see what it turns out to be, but I hope it's lightweight like it's supposed to be. Last two cards. Let's knock these out. Now on this card, I have a few different people. Mitsu, Asad Yezden, Martin Plevka, 8064, Wayne Ray, and Ace Trails. Some of you guys asked the same question. Uh, Mitsu and Asad, you asked if I liked Fuji bikes. Well, yeah, I like Fuji bikes. They're good bikes. I don't own one. There's not a dealer close. The nearest dealer is in Tuscaloosa. That's a couple hours from here. That's why I don't have one, although I did almost buy one of their full suspension bikes about two months ago. Martin Plevka and AD64. How much have you spent on your bikes? Both not enough and too much, all at the same time. Wayne Ray, the Mirax Finesse. You have already upgraded your fork and something about upgrading the head tube. I'm not sure what you're talking about there. But what upgrades next? Obviously, I can't tell you what to do with your own bike. If it were mine, I would put wider bars on it and put a different drivetrain and different tires. But that's just me. Ace Trails, what did, why did you get rid of the Trek 820? Interesting that you say rid. Are you from the South? Because that's how we would say things. Did you get rid of it? That's what we say here. But the Trek 820, one of my favorite old school type modern bikes, simply because I loved my old Trek 4300, but I've kind of evolved into 27.5s now. That's where I feel comfortable at. And because of that, with its 26 and its rim brakes, which is still not a problem, they still work. That's why I got, a, got rid of the Trek 820. I bought a second Trek 820 and sold it before I even rode it. I don't expect that I'll have another one, but they're good little bikes. But for what they charge for them, they're probably better options out there right now, just because they're still expensive. And finally, let me hang my head, get some serenity here. Serenity now, if you're a Seinfeld fan. I'm going to talk about the Cranbrook and this is for I don't have one name on here 
Cerberus 1981 is not on the front, but Connor Patrick and Renaissance Man, you all asked about the Cranbrook. Why has that project been sitting seemingly abandoned, much like many of you think that the XR Pro has, but that is not the case, and it's not the case with the Cranbrook. Let me tell you what happened. A, I'm lazy. B, I had this grand vision of completing the Bike Barn Studio, and once I got the studio complete, I would be able to do step by step the entire thing, all in one excellently filmed, excellently lit place. And then the southern humidity in summer hit. And I don't do well in southern humidity in summer, especially when I'm having to dig like a 50 foot trench for the power manually with a pick. So I go biking in the mornings before it gets too hot. It's already hot, but before it gets too hot. And then I come back in and I try to work. So I mean, I'm working like 30 minutes a day on the bike barn studio trying to get it ready. I would have thought it would have been finished by now, but you know, that just didn't happen. So. It's starting to get, or it's about to start getting cooler, hopefully. And I should be getting power to the Bike Barn Studio, and then I can complete the Cranbrook project. But it's the heat mixed in with a little bit of laziness. That's the only reason. I haven't forgotten about it. But thanks, you guys. I don't have your name on there. Cerebus 19, Cerberus 1981, Connor Patrick, and Renaissance Man. Okay, so that is it for this questions and answer session. I don't know if you spotted the hat here. I don't know, what do you think? Are these even worthy of a giveaway or something? I'm, I'm not really happy with how they turned out. They're supposed to be sublimated. They ended up having to use this decal or screen print method. Not happy with it, but if you think I should give these away, if you'd like one, then uh, just maybe comment below and I might do a giveaway in the future. But in the meantime, you can always contact me on kevcentral.com. If I didn't get to your question, there's anything urgent that you need to ask or anything important. I don't know how much urgency there is to any bike stuff. But thanks for watching and everyone have a great day.